This week was one of those weeks that just nothing went right. Every time I touched the wheel, I ground the opal away to nothing. No colour, no stones, no gems. I can't believe it. This is my worst nightmare. But I tell you what, it was lucky I chose those five pieces out of another parcel that I think could do well. Because these ones are doing no good. And you chose it first, here is number four. G'day and welcome to Black Opal Direct. My name's Justin. Well, we have chosen the number, what is it, number three or number four? Number four, um, we're going to cut out of the five pieces that we've chosen. And this one, as I said before, um, has a really good chance and I, uh, of uncovering a really nice gem inside. And I don't think the person who rubbed this a little bit didn't quite take enough potch off. Now, don't quote me, um, it could all go pear-shaped, but it also could go really well. So um, all I really need to do this time around is just a little bit of rubbing, taking a bit of um, the edge off, and then let's take that potch out of the top and hopefully we get a beautiful, clean green, orange, and possibly red gem. Let's go. Out of the five pieces, this one has to be probably the most risky uh, because the color bar is already flat. There is inclusions all through that color bar and it doesn't look like it's going to cut very well at all. You see a little bit of telltale color up there. Doesn't mean much at the moment. Except for the fact that the potch could come out. Very, very small chance. So this side, you can see that now I've exposed it, the sand's gone, but there's, there's probably a millimetre of colour. Um, that could mean that that could clean up. That's a, that's a hopeful sign, hopefully. Uh, not sure yet. Let's keep going. So you can see that colour there, it's dipping under, which is an even better sign. And it's taking a fair bit of the uh, risk away, bit by bit, the more I take off, it seems to be the better it's getting. Um, so the possibility that we have a clean stain up there. So you can see that starting to wedge right in there, that's really cool. Right in there. So there's a chance that this will join up. The further I go into the main colour, the more chance that will join up right there. And that is the hope. So I'm not going to take any more of that colour in because worst case scenario, if I get one little stone there, if I keep taking it away, that colour will disappear. So I think what I have to do is, I really have to take this top off now before I waste more colour. Seems that way. I'm going in. <laughs> Oh, 
pool. Some of it just came clean. You can see there's a nice big patch of it, nice clean color there. coming cleaner but this spot here that might not be um, coming clean that might go right to the bottom oh man that color is ridiculous check out that now if that comes clean properly, still got all this potch here. If it comes out, wow, what a stone. What stones. Mm, yeah, so really pretty gem sitting there. And there's a possibility of a really pretty gem sitting there as well. Oh wow. With that beautiful colour and all those inclusions in the stone, we're going to have to do different measures to make clean stones. I can't have those inclusions in the colour. I won't get the price. All right. So now we've exposed some of the most beautiful colour. Um, we have to be really cautious about where, um, where we're going to cut a stone out of. And I dare say that this black spot is going right through to the bottom and it joins up right there. And this black spot comes right in a long way. So now we've got some potch here and a line of potch there and possibility of clean and definitely a clean stone there. So. I think what we have to do is we have to slice the, the stone pretty much from that bit of potch right through to that side. I don't think there's anybody out there that can draw with the black texture with opal without getting it on their fingers. So we're going to slice that right through there, take a bit of a risk, um, but possibly cut two very beautiful beautiful stones that uh, could be exactly as I estimated possibly 10 grand's worth of stones so oh, let's hope it all cleans up and everything works out like I'm hoping let's get on the slicer let's get that I pause here for a minute because I'm about to have an anxiety attack I'm just about to slice through some really beautiful colour to risk two stones rather than one real big one. So let's go. That was the best decision I could have ever made. Wow. If I had rubbed this stone any further down, we would have lost every bit of colour. You can see that there's absolutely no colour right where I sliced it. So if I had gone any further down in the middle, we would have lost all of that beautiful colour. So very, very lucky. Sometimes Mother Nature throws luck our way, and this time I got lucky. The battle is far from over, but it's looking much better. So here we are, we have our slice. Very pretty colour, um, with lots of potch going in around everywhere. Now that slice was probably in the most perfect spot I could get because that potch is coming right up to the colour. So the truth is that if I would have tried to get more out of it, there would have been more potch growing right in the centre. So really, really lucky move, that's for sure. 
So now my job is to find the best stone in each piece. Let's get that wheel going. We are not out of the woods yet. We have got a long way to go before we can say we've got clean stones. And I am doubting it every time I push on the wheel. see that that potch goes right down to that groove so that was a good move Just take some of that back off on that other wheel, just quickly. There we go, we're done there. Nice and even. So, the goal is to get that colour clean. I wonder if we can do it. Oh, see that come clean just then? Wow. That's not bad looking colour. Not bad at all. Bring it in a little bit more to make it cleaner. So from what I can see here, the colour bars are so thin that I am risking everything by even touching them. And when it comes to polishing, I could even still lose that colour. So it's going to take some really careful time and effort to uh, get a nice clean stone. Beautiful, that should clean up quite well uh, once it's on the dock stick. And I'm thinking that's probably around about the four carats, so really, really happy about that one. Uh, let's try the next piece. This one may not clean up from the experience I just had with the other piece is some of this that I don't think will clean up. Uh, we can only try.
really is quite quite nice colour. You may see a towel on a brand new machine. I'm doing some testing on new brands. More to come soon, but it's pretty exciting. Looks pretty good. Let's have a closer look. <laughs> so two nice stones. Um, they look very, like actually almost matching, but one's twice the size than the other. And um, we did manage to get most of that potch out, which I'm really excited. There is some residue potch still in there. And if I, if I look at the loop um, really closely, my gem torch yeah you can see that there's still some potch in there and some of it will still come out and some of it won't so we just have to deal with uh, it's pretty good actually it's not bad um, once I polish them up the brightness of the color should outweigh any kind of inclusions in there so really happy and by the way these gem torches are on my website for sale and um, they're the best tool you can have. Let's get to cutting them. The risk to reward ratio on a stone like this Hello, is probably around about the 30% chance and 70% failure. So we're pretty lucky that uh, we've got what we've got and um, now I just hope I don't polish through that colour into the potch on the bottom. And later on I'll show you uh, how thin and how wonky that colour bar is on both stones that um, it should have shown potch through it. I just don't know how I got away with it.
Well, that was touch and go. I really, um, I think I got it just on the right line before we ran into some potch. Um, the bigger stone is 3.88 carats and the smaller one is 1.80 carats. And uh, together they make two beautiful gems and um, they could make a set because they almost match. The pattern in this is something that I haven't um, explained or seen for a while and that is moss and feather pattern. So the feather pattern is like, like lines like this, kind of like um, a softer version of chaff is what you would call feather pattern. So uh, we've got 3.88, 1500 carat, um, six. So we're looking around about, we've made 8,000, we've made $8,000 out of these stones. I was hoping or thinking that there could be possibly 10. So eight's not bad. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. From what the parcel cost me, I bought a whole heap of stones together. And, and these two came out of it. So very lucky that all that potch came out. I'm really stoked. Um, so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time for another one of those top five that we've chosen. See ya. Hey, you back. Get down. Get down. I go down. down. <laughs> yeah.